Lai, 39M, Sun, 17M, Bryce dated our neighbor Lana, 17F, for a year, they broke up for reasons I don't know. I won't sugarcoat this, I never liked Lana, she always seemed a little unhinged, controlling, and aggressive, she was always demanding Bryce's attention, and there were quite a few times when she showed up at our house out of nowhere, whether it was 7am or 11pm, because Bryce wasn't answering his phone, screaming and calling him a cheater when it wasn't like that. The thought of our son getting abused by his GF made us worried so much. My wife and I tried to talk him out of that relationship, we said how that it wasn't normal nor healthy, we didn't want to force the breakup because we feared Lana would lash out at him, so we tried to do it in a sneaky way, we don't know if it worked, but they ended up breaking up. He said that after he broke up with her Lana didn't contact him which was weird because he expected her to go nuts, but I told him that if fate didn't give him crap, he better not tease it. Now the problem is that we bought my son a car for Christmas, nothing fancy, but enough to get him to school, his job, and eventually college, he parks it in our driveway outside our home. Ever since the month began we had been founding scratches all over the car, we know Lana was doing it, but since it was minimal, my son decided to not do anything, even if we could prove that it was her, we've CCTV. Still, something smelled bad to me so I decided to switch one of the cameras facing his car directly just in case. Well, two weeks ago we got up and we found my son's car covered in a lot of crap. Paint, glue, feathers, confetti, the door handles were wrecked, flat tires, paint all over the windows, you get the picture, Bryce and my wife were so distraught. We called the police and I handled them the CCTV that showed Lana and her brother, 23M, destroying my son's car. We press charges and needles to say, Lana's brother went straight to jail, but since she's still a minor her parents want to make a deal, but I refused. I don't think she should get away out before the police were here she was laughing till she dropped and she tried to play it cool, if she thought this was funny, then she's old enough to face the consequences. My wife and I want to stand our ground, they said they'll buy my son a better car and put Lana in therapy but is not enough. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. This is the wake up call Anna, her brother, and her parents need. I can't picture my, very much adult, brothers helping me wreck my ex's car just because I'm bitter. They'd rather snitch to my parents and help me avoid getting time in jail than be the cool bro. Not the idiot. If you cave, you're literally teaching Lana that no matter what criminal or sociopathic acts she does in the future, her parents will buy her way out of trouble. She needs to learn early there are consequences to criminal actions. Not the idiot. Lana needs therapy. And press charges. Possibly since she is a minor with mental health issues, she may get steered in the right direction. But if you drop this, she gets a free pass and could go worse next time. Physical violence against an object, car, could escalate to physical violence against your son. I wouldn't want to take that chance. I, 21M, have a strained relationship with my parents. They are involved in pretty much every social event circle in our city, be it church, school, clubs, etc. For them, what people think is the most important thing. For that, they will lie about pretty much any bad thing that could potentially tarnish their standing and have forced my sister, 24F, and me to behave in certain ways or follow specific rules. Some examples. My sister and I were not allowed to play with certain kids in our school or neighborhood because their parents were in trade rather than academics. My parents forced me to stop talking to a really close friend in middle school because his parents got divorced. When I got caught smoking in high school, my parents made up a distant uncle with meds problems and told everyone he influenced me. My sister came home one day and introduced her Spanish boyfriend to my parents. They didn't like that so they told everyone the boyfriend is an exchange student that we are housing. My mother once made up a bunch of stuff about a neighboring couple, stuff like her husband is cheating, and she does adult films to pay the bills. Of course, she always claims to have heard it from someone else, who heard it from someone else, etc. I could list plenty more, but you get the point. Now recently I was near my hometown visiting a friend, and I ran into the leader of a church group I was part of. I was pretty engaged in that group, so we sat down for a coffee and talked about the good old times. He asked to be about my studies and how my fiancé is doing. I was confused and told him I am not studying and don't have a fiancé. Turns out my parents made up a bunch of lies to cover the fact that I decided to go for an apprenticeship and turned out to be gay. 
one thing led to another, and together we went over a lot of incidences and stories from the past, with me exposing more and more lies. The results could be seen a few days later, my parents called me very angrily asking me, how could I do this to them, you ruined our lives, and we can never talk to the neighbors again. I told them their entire reputation is built on lies and spreading rumors that it is disgusting they even call themselves Christians at this point and that I'm done being part of their little scheme. My sister later called me after mom called her in tears. She is torn, on one side she gets me, has already gone minimal contact with my parents, on the other hand, it solved nothing but hurt my parents. Not the idiot. Sounds like you didn't even know that you were exposing them until it was too late. Someone asks a question about your life, and you answer. It's your fault your parents didn't tell you to want to say. Not the idiot, come on, admitted. Distant uncle not only taught you to smoke, but he was also the head of the local group promoting the gay agenda. Probably promoted vaccination against COVID as well. Not the idiot. That pile of lies was just waiting to fall apart. You can only invent a certain amount of crap before you get caught when someone goes. What? No. They only have themselves to blame for building their castle on sand. I was born in South Africa but emigrated when I was just a few months old, so I am totally American. I come from a family of full-on apartheid supporters, and when it ended, basically everyone bailed for America. My parents and aunts and uncles eventually were educated and came around, but my grandparents, while being very sweet and loving to me, were true believers in what apartheid stood for. They made a small fortune in South Africa by literally investing and owning businesses in the apartheid era. To be totally fair, they also made a ton of money in the US, but still the money because they were white and well connected in South Africa. My grandmother died recently. She lived pretty lavishly up until the day she died in a very exclusive retirement home in Southern California, so I figured there wouldn't be any money left and maybe I'd get some family heirlooms. My head about popped off when I saw the number me and my cousin will split, it's about $725,000 each money that will literally change my life. My parents' business failed so I wasn't nearly as well off as my cousin. She's also now married, lives in Rancho Santa Fe, Google it if you aren't familiar, and will be just fine without this money. She claims she's going to donate 100% of it to charities in South Africa. She is seriously chiding me that if I plan on keeping it, then I am taking advantage of blood money built on apartheid. I have student loans I could pay off, I could actually have a down payment on a house, I could invest, I mean, I know where this money came from, but it could literally mean my life would be better. I understand where it came from, but I also can't possibly imagine giving it away. I have no idea what charities are like in South Africa, and family friends we have that still live there say that corruption has taken over everything from government to charities, and I'm better off just keeping it. I understand my cousin's point, but man is it hard to say goodbye to that much money that will change my life. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your money your choice. Not the idiot. Tell your cousin that if she cares so much, she can give you 725k, and then you'll donate your inheritance wherever she wants. By the way, she's only doing so well in life because of that blood money. Her lifestyle is only possible because her parents were wealthy and connected, and they were only wealthy and connected because of her awful grandparents. Your parents messed up and it didn't trickle down as much to you as it did to her, but that doesn't make it any less true. Grats on being able to climb out of debt when so many people in your generation won't be able to. Don't forget how lucky you were, and don't waste the opportunities you have now. Not the idiot. Your cousin is being ridiculous. Does she know for a fact that every cent of that money was made directly off the back of apartheid? No hard work or frugality involved on the part of your grandparents. Unless that money literally comes from running the jail Mandela was in I wouldn't sweat any misplaced sense of guilt. I'm 27F, I've been taking antidepressants for around two years after an event in Unit that gave me PTSD. If I don't take them then I turn into essentially a human gummy bear who can't do anything except mooch around like a miserable sack of potatoes. Yes, I also see a therapist for this as well. Anyway, my flatmate of 18 months left the country to go home before COVID and has now declined to return, so I had to find a new flatmate. 
the girl that I found seemed nice, a bit weird in the typical hippie vegan way, but didn't gave a problem with living with someone who eats bacon, and I was having trouble finding potential flatmates and can't afford the apartment by myself. We agreed to a six weeks trial before she would have signed on for a year. Initially, everything seemed fine, but in the third week, I noticed that my antidepressants were occasionally not in the cabinet in the morning when I woke up, I always take them at 8am before work. Often I would briefly look for them, but have to rush out of the house before I could find them. They would usually be back that evening, or I'd find them in the other bathroom cabinet or in the vanity next to the toilet. I asked her if she was moving them a couple of times and the first time she said no, and the second she said that she was trying to find her health vitamins and had emptied the cabinets looking for them and must have forgotten to put my antidepressants back. I thought this was weird cause nothing else had moved but shrugged it off. In the fourth week, I couldn't find them for three days, confronted her, and she offered to help search only for her to find them in the kitchen cabinets and blamed it on me taking them into the kitchen, I never do. Beginning of the fifth week I couldn't find them again, and while I was searching the apartment I saw her open bag and looked inside, yes, I know, I'm the idiot here, lo and behold there were my pills. I confronted her that evening, and she said she was trying to wean me off them, and that I should stop putting that poison in my body. I told her that it wasn't going to work out and to find somewhere else to live. She threw a hissy fit and packed all her stuff that night and left, to be clear I did say she had until the end of the trial period to leave, she didn't have to go immediately. Anyways, four weeks later I have a new flatmate who seems great, but the girl has been messaging me begging to come back because the friend she's been staying with has kicked her out. Obviously, I have another flatmate now so she can't move back in, but am I the idiot here? Not the idiot. Who the hell messes with someone else's meds? Not the idiot. This was dangerous. You never mess with someone's medication. It doesn't matter what it's for. You just don't do it. You got lucky finding out and kicking her out early. Not the idiot, not even for looking in her bag. You had more than enough reason to. She gaslit you, and literally no one besides you and your doctor have any business deciding what medications you should be on. My 10-year-old kid has been saving his money, birthday, allowance, etc., for months now to get a Nintendo Switch so he can play BOTW. Right now he has $200 saved up. At his current allowance, $10 a week, it will still take him months to be able to afford it. I know he really wants it as all of his friends have one and he hasn't been obnoxious about it, just diligently saving up his money. Now I have to say, he's a really good kid kind and smart, does his chores without complaining, friendly to everyone. He's been making great grades in school and was even made captain of his soccer team. Instead of making him do more chores to earn more money, I thought of a more fun solution to help him get his switch. I told him, if you can beat Ocarina of Time without googling for help, though I would help him along the way if he got stuck on my old N64, I'll pay for the rest of your switch and get you BOTW. The wife was initially opposed to the idea, but then thought it could be a fun father-son bonding thing, so she went along with it. Part of my reasoning too is I just want him to appreciate how far video games have come, and OOT is a timeless classic. He jumped at the idea. After a weekend of playing, he's already at Zora's domain as a young Link. He seems to be having fun with it and hasn't gotten too frustrated yet. He's only played Minecraft really so the dated graphics don't bother him either. But anyway I told a couple of friends about it and they think I'm a massive idiot. That I'm trying to relive my childhood vicariously through my son and that I should just get him the switch because he's already such a good kid. Now I'm having second thoughts and I'm feeling bad about it but he does seem to be enjoying the challenge. So, am I the idiot? Not the idiot sounds like a fun idea. Not the idiot. What the hell is wrong with your friends? You're living vicariously by showing your son something from your childhood. Do they flip out if you show him the old Star Wars films? Your friends are idiots. Not the idiot, if your son is up for it and seems excited it doesn't matter what other people think. I think it's a cute idea.